welcome to the second episode of Watercolor Wednesdays. So, in the last episode, I talked about how I wanted to focus more on the underlying colours, so the colours that are laid underneath the more detailed and refined ones. And I do feel like I had more success with that this time. So again, I laid out the water in the shape of the fish and this allowed me to do the wet on wet technique of just gently laying down little blobs of colour and letting it feather and merge and splurge outwards. And I didn't have to worry about it going outside of the lines as long as I didn't put my brush too close to the edges. Although they were a lot more colours that I used, it was still a case of not using as many colours as possible. In that sense, it tends to get very crowded and cluttered and the colours might not look cohesive or coherent. So they were selected carefully, there were similar values and most of them fit a sort of cool colours or earthly colour scheme. I lay down the colours very gently to start off with and then slowly began introducing more and more. And I'll talk about evaluating the painting towards the end of this video, but I thought that another focus for this video would be talking about what materials I'm using. I've not been asked to promote these, I'm not sponsored or commissioned, so these are just my honest opinions on these products. I'm using a set of Rowney watercolours, they're second hand, they were given to me by a family friend, and they're probably quite old because I think since then Rowney became Dala Rowney or Dala Rowney, but they are high quality and they're in the higher price range. They're a set of 24 and it also comes with a little palette mixer in the lid. They have lasted me a long time and they do exactly what I need them to. They seem to be of a good quality pigment, they mix well, they blend well and I don't have any issues with these paints. Because they were bought so long ago I don't think this particular set is still for sale. I also use just standard masking tape, so from either Wilco's or a pound shop or anywhere. In this sketchbook I've been working on pages back to back, which means that when I turn over and are working on the other side of the leaf, because of the way that the spine of the sketchbook is, the page doesn't lay flat. So if I try to paint in it without holding it down with masking tape, then the angle of it would start directing the water towards the spine. For the gouache paint, I used a white Boldmere 12mm tube. It came from a set from the works, which I'm not sure whether it's available outside the UK or not, but it was a set of 14 for about £3. They're not amazing quality, but as I'm only using a tiny amount of white, it's perfectly suitable for the uses that I'm using it for. In this sketchbook, I've just been using mostly two different paintbrushes. One is a number 7 art stat brush. It's the green brush with a gold handle that you can see towards the start of this video. My art stat brushes, they came from a large set of, I think it was around 15 brushes, but it could have been more. Uh, the whole set was around £30, but it went out as a student because the university gifted me with a certain amount that I could spend in their shop, and that's one of the things I chose to get with it. I'm really careful with my brushes. I always I always wash them and I always leave them upright. I've had this brush for about two years now and it lost its point pretty early on. There's also a few stray hairs and it's quite a fuzzy brush so it's not great for detail but I don't mind using it for a larger spread of colour. The brush that I use for details is a Dale Around the Graduate Round number 4. It's the white brush with a black handle you can see that I use for the rest of the video. I got it from the Ryman Stationery Shop for a couple of pounds. I haven't had it for too long, but it's retained its shape very well. It's been very consistent. It retains its point, which is a great thing to have from a brush. The sketchbook that I'm using is a Moleskine Pocket Watercolour Sketchbook. It's designed specifically for watercolour. There is a lot of hype about them online, so I thought I'd try them out. And it's super absorbent, you can work lots of layers over the top of each other. I haven't had any issues with it bleeding through when I've been working back to back on pages. There's a nice amount of texture, the colours blend really well together, and it can hold really vibrant colours as well as subtle ones. The only potential issue I have with this sketchbook is that I'd worry about bending the pages too much and turning them over too much because it seems like they could tear from the spine if I'm not too careful. I only use one glass of water, some people use two, uh, one to clean the brush after they've applied a colour and then the other to clean the brush before they go to a new colour. But I don't find that too necessary, I probably have to refill my water more often, but I don't find it a major problem. 
Now going back to evaluating this painting now that the video has progressed and you can see more of it. The quite interesting thing about this painting is that it came to life quite slowly and gradually. Especially with the eye at the end. I don't feel like it fully came into looking like a real fish until the little highlight with the gouache was added to the eye. But overall I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I think the use of colours that weren't necessarily in the details was much better than in the last episode was quite tricky with this particular fish because it was quite translucent and the details are quite subtle. Um, apart from the eye, there's the, again, the lines of the fins and it had a few little speckles. I guess they were like the fish equivalent of freckles, but those were on the top fin and below the eye as well. But even though this one had more of a range of colours, it seemed to have slightly less detail. I guess because the scales on this fish weren't exactly visible. So I think a major focus for next week will be looking at more detail. So I'll have to find one of the pictures that I've taken of a fish that I can really hone in on the details with. Overall, it's nice to see that I've improved since last week, even if it's only in a minor aspect, but it's still quite gratifying to have. And hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time. Bye.